Hi, it's Dr. Saab. This is the new 2023 Mercedes-Benz GLC. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the main features of this Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 AMG line 4MATIC SUV Premium Plus. This video is perfect if you've just bought the new GLC or if you're thinking about buying one. In today's video, I'm gonna focus on the infotainment and some other really useful features of this GLC Premium Plus which has all the bells and whistles. Check out part one, where I show you all of the main features the driver needs to know. If you wanna know what specification this car has, then check out the link below. Don't worry, you will not need to memorize everything I say in this video, because I have made a summary sheet of what features the car has. Please check out the link in the description below. I want to say a big thank you to Lucas Mercedes-Benz Wolverhampton for helping me make this video possible. One really useful feature that I really want to show off. So let's pretend I'm too lazy to manually adjust the seats. Mercedes actually have this feature. If I go to comfort and then go to position seat automatically. Now, if I set my height, so let's say I think I'm about 5'8". You can change it to centimeters if required. And all I'll do is click on start position. And now the seats and the steering wheel are adjusting to my height. And this is the recommended driving position for myself now, which is very interesting. I might save that to M2. So to do that, M2. Let's save the driving position. It's actually a feel higher, so yeah, I think Mercedes might be right here. This might be a better driving position for me. I like it. So to pair your phone, I have done a separate video on how to do that and how to connect Apple CarPlay. So if you want to watch that, check out the GLC playlist and that'll show you how to connect your phone to the car. What I have done in today's video, which is a bit different, I've connected my phone with a cable and now I've got Apple CarPlay so if I go to home what phone it's right there so I can't connect the phone here but if I click Apple CarPlay right there I just need to accept and start and now you can see I've got Apple CarPlay set up I've got access to all of my apps that I like to use nice and clear takes the full screen nearly there's just this little edge here you can notice there so that's interesting. When I go out of Apple CarPlay, it takes the full screen, including that little bit there. It's not the end of the world, it's fine. Now, next, I am gonna show you these, the temperature controls. And you'll notice I can change uh, the dual zone climate control. I've got dual zone for the rear passengers as well. And again, it's exactly the same on how you use it. And let's pretend the passenger wants 21 degrees, I want 18. And let's pretend that it needs to be the same. I think I'll hold this down. And you'll notice now, the temperature's actually gone to 22 degrees. That's the recommended uh, temperature that Mercedes-Benz say the car should be when passengers are in the car. It's a hot day, so I'm gonna go with 20. If you want to unsync it, you can like so. If I want to sync it, so it's 20 degrees on both sides, you can, by just clicking sync. If I want to switch off the AC, just press that button. I want to leave that on. AC, I recommend keeping that on. Uh, these systems are designed to be on to give you nice fresh air in the car. And it also helps to prevent demisting your windows as well. So just a useful little hack there. If you need to manually adjust the where the airflow is you can but I tend to leave the car in auto like so I let the car figure out how to distribute the air if you press this button let's say you're going in a um, underground I would press that button and then any nasty air from the outside shouldn't get into the cabin if you're on the motorway press that button and if you're behind like a big truck or a lorry, press that button and then uh, you should have a less smelly car. And then when you're finished, just press that again. If the windscreen's frozen up, 
then just press this one for the front one and then this one for the rear. I've accidentally pressed it, put it back in auto. It's really warmed up the car straight away as well, I can feel that. Very interesting. Ah, oh, another feature as well. So when the car's warmed up, you do get something called residual heat. So you have got residual engine heat utilization. So what you can do is leave the car, and this is only for premium plus models. You can leave the car with the heater still running and the car's off, and the car will try and keep the car warm for about 30 minutes. That's pretty useful, especially in winter. And I've just noticed as well, I can control the second row seats, their climate control, which is very useful. Now I'm back in the home screen. I'm gonna show you how to use the radio. So you can access the radio from here, or it's prompting me if I wanna choose a radio now. I'll, I'll choose from here and then here you've got your radio and you just swipe you can change the list by pressing this button then you get a list view which might be easier for you and you'll notice a little star if I click on the star that will now save into my favorites so if I click favorites you'll see these are all my favorites and if I want to get rid of any I just click on the three dots and delete the entry well, that's quite useful and then all sources if I want to search for any radio stations I can you've also got AM radio so that's very nice but you've got FM and digital radio you've got alphabetical order as well which is useful you press the I button what does that do well that just gives me more information on on this radio channel if I want to and then these are the sound settings so you can change the sound as well so I would actually leave in 3D sound because I want a more immersive sound pure the sound will be then mainly from the front speakers that's quite useful to know and then personal sound profile if I give that a click you can see this setup assist enables you to create your own personal sound profile for your Burmester audio system so this is only with the Premium Plus model with the Burmester speakers. So I click start. That's pretty cool. interesting guys pretty cool guys hope that catches 
Hope you'll be able to hear that later on. Now I'm going to leave that personal sound on. And then equaliser. Again, you can change the bass if you want to. I will probably leave it like this for now and then see how I get on. Balance and fader. So this is useful. If you have uh, rear passengers maybe listening to their iPad, uh, maybe with headphones, that's what I do with my daughter. I tend to leave the uh, speakers on the front only on so then I'm not disturbing my daughter. But I'll leave that like that for now. Sound focus, now this is really useful. So if you want all of the speakers to mainly be focused on the front, then you can do that as well, or the rear. That's pretty cool. And then loud normalization. I'll probably just keep that as medium, but some people will probably want it as loud or even off. That's pretty cool. Next, I've got the cog here. Here, you've got the more of the radio settings as well. So if you need radio announcements such as traffic, switch that on. Radio text information, frequency fix. That will automatically adjust the radios, you know, if you go into a different region. And it will automatically do that for you. So I'll leave that on. DAB slideshow. That's pretty cool. I like that, that tile style. And then here you can, for the traffic announcements, customize it for different things such as weather, or the travel, and sport as well. Pretty cool. So that's radio. Media. Give that a click. I can connect stuff for a Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, or USB as well. And you can watch videos on here and listen to music through a USB stick. I'll probably provide a useful link for an adapter because uh, if you've got the old USB uh, flash drive then you might want to keep that and just buy an adapter which goes into this USB-C slot. Now if I go back, got Apple CarPlay and then I'll show you the other stuff after as well as phone. I have shown off-road, I've shown what this does in my previous video so check that out. If you haven't, that'll show you some really cool features such as this and how it works. Now if I move down, I've got these controls here. So if I click on that, it changes the driving modes of the car. So I've got the off-road mode, got eco, comfort, sport and individual. So if I click on the cog there, I can customize the car's gearbox and steering feel the esp how clever how quickly it reacts and stuff like that so i give that a click you can have a more sporty setup the sound of the car if you want a more of a engine note click on sport steering you've got comfort or sport and then drive eco comfort sport if i go back to off-road so driving systems being adopted, therefore only use the program for driving off modes and not on public roads. That's fine, I'll just pretend I am. And now you can see the maximum speed is only 68 miles per hour. And the car's gearbox and everything is going to be more torquey. So it's designed to be on gravel and stuff like that. I'm going to put the car back into auto mode. Oops, see, click the wrong button. So I'll go back to comfort. What I tend to do is keep in comfort while I'm uh, driving locally and then put in sport when you're on the motorway because that'll hold the gear longer. That might be quicker. Eco, use that when you're in stop start traffic. So that's when I would recommend using that. Otherwise keep in comfort. And then individual. I would probably set individual as a sportier drive but with the comfortable steering. That's how I would set it up. Let me know what would you set yours up as. If I press this button, this then loads my cameras. And this is the 360 camera. Now this is very useful. I have done a separate video again on the self parking feature. So that uses the 360 camera. So check that out, that is very useful. And all I'll do is click on there and then the car will find a parking space. But I'll put back to camera views and you'll see, if I click that one, that's the front camera. 
this one's for the rear this one checks for curbs on both sides as well and then auto that'll just put it back into an auto mode for the and you'll get a bird's eye view of your car which is very useful and if I press this one now every time I come into this area the car will then put the um, camera on by itself which I think is very useful if I engage reverse again you'll see I've got the 360 camera and then I've got my reverse camera actually because it says here rear camera so what I'm going to do I'm just going to see if I can show you something else so I'm going to show you how the sensors work so as I go closer you'll notice that it's changed the angle it's gone a bit bent and it's yellow as I get closer and closer it actually changes color to red as well so that's saying I'm getting really really close uh, so that's very useful that red line that's to signify that that's the front of the car so don't go past that red line otherwise I'm gonna be hitting that so and then if I get too close that beeps to say you're too close and if I engage reverse you'll notice now it's back to blue so that's a perfect amount of distance around the car very useful I think if I move forward again so if I park there I'll show you what it, that looks like so you can see there's a good amount of gap you can walk around the car as well while I've got the car running you can see the headlights as well which is nice got like a floaty kind of design to it I'll move back into the car. I just want to show you what the reverse gear does and the reverse sensors. So if I go all the way back, you'll notice it's going yellow, yellow, yellow. That's saying that's very close. So let's put the car into park and check that out. So you can see that's really close. It's about steering wheel size, isn't it? That gap. If I move forward, if I leave it around there, that's the perfect amount of gap to leave. So then anyone with a pram or a wheelchair can go around the car. So that's very useful, I think. If your car doesn't have 360 camera, there is another way to check how much gap to leave at the rear of the car. You might have noticed a little yellow line just sticking out. That is the recommended space to leave when parking. And you'll notice again, I reverse, the blue changes, and the colour of it changes, that's really close, so I'll, I'll leave that like that, and that's it. Now if I press this button, this allows quick access to certain features of the car that you might need to use, such as the car wash mode, the interior protection, so if I click on that, and then leave the car, and lock the car, if there's passengers in the car, the car alarm won't go off, so that's quite useful. I'll leave that back on. Then you've got your access to the active lane parking assist. This is useful if you're off-roading. Hill descent system. And then if I want to change the car manually into gear, you can. But I'm going to leave that off. you got your head-up display as well. And then the tollway protection, if you ever break down. You can access all the settings as well of the, of the car from here, which is useful. You get your hazard lights. You get a little warning there, a little tick sound. You get your fingerprint sensor. This says seven different uh, drivers, their settings of the car, including driving position, how they like the ambient lights. So that's very useful. One thing to note with Mercedes Me, if you buy a car from a dealer, then your car will be set up with Mercedes Me. If you haven't bought from a Mercedes dealer, that's perfectly fine. As long as you've got your logbook and uh, your driving license, go to your local dealer and then they will connect your car to Mercedes Me. If you finance your car with a, another company, then you may need to get permission from the leasing company uh, to actually be connected to Mercedes Me. So. Uh, you may need to just ask them 
to contact Mercedes on your behalf to get connected to Mercedes me or worst case scenario get them to send you an email giving permission that you can use the Mercedes me function again you'll need to provide that email to your local dealer as well as your driving license and possibly your lease agreement just as further proof here if I press this button that switches off or just just the display off if you need to so if you this will always still be here your temperature controls I'll leave that on you've got your mute button here and then the volume controls by just swiping I'm gonna move up to this area and what I'm gonna first show is how to open the panoramic sunroof so all I'll do swipe like that swipe like this and then the sunroof opens up which is very useful and then if I want to close it all I'll do is swipe like so that closes them the panoramic sunroof I have also got the electric blind so if I swipe like again the electric blind will then close now if I want to open the blind again just do a swipe function it's a huge panoramic sunroof compared to the old GLC they've made that pillar much thinner you have a huge panoramic sunroof and then if I push this I have just a bit of uh, air if I need to and then if I press it again you then close it very cool very useful now here you'll see the passenger airbag that's off that's perfectly fine when someone's sat there that's when that will then say passenger airbag on only when someone's sat there so that's very useful to know i will show sos in a sec press this that means when you open the doors the lights will not turn on and then you've got your rear lights and then lights on the front as well which you can't really see because it's so much light today and then you've got your mercedes me so if you were to break down press that button and then someone will speak to you through the speakers of the car they'll check if you're okay and ask you for what help you need you have got the breakdown number right here as well just in the door and then you can call them directly that way just make a note that first three years of the car it's the breakdown cover is included for free after that as long as you, the car has been serviced through mercedes-benz dealer so a full mercedes-benz dealer service history then the car um then you get breakdown cover every year as long as you get it serviced every year by mercedes now you have the sos switch as well if i give that a click you'll notice a little switch and if i press that switch then you're giving permission to mercedes-benz uh, your location what you're doing by pressing that button is saying to Mercedes this is where I am please help me someone will speak to you through the speakers of the car and then ask you if you're okay what emergency you're in if you need ambulance fire brigade or police a really cool feature is you don't have to press that SOS switch so if the airbags ever go off then that SOS switch will automatically engage and then car will automatically send the location to Mercedes and they'll check if you're okay. If they don't get a response, then they'll just send out everyone to your, your location, which is very clever. Now I have done a separate video showing what all of these little storage cubbies do. My iPhone 13 Pro Max did fit in there as well. So that's quite useful to know. Uh, one thing I'll show is this storage compartment. Now you'll see there's a lock on there and you can actually use the blade from this key and I think all you do is push this it then releases the blade and now I can lock this glove box that's locked it yep and then if I put it back in unlock it like so and then releases that that's a very useful little area to keep belongings safe next i'm just going to go in a in more depth on what these screens options do 
So if I, so I've shown you Apple CarPlay, you can see that in a separate video, how that works. Info, this just gives me information on the car, vehicle information, engine information. You've got your apps. So you've got your dash cam in here as well. And you will need to use a USB to store the recordings. So that's quite cool, very useful. You have your Mercedes Me. Again, I've explained that. I don't think that's going to work because it's not connected to an account. So I can do that through the car as well, which is useful. But a Mercedes Benz local dealer will be able to set that up. You have your browser. I have done a separate video on this. So all you need to do, you can hotspot off your phone or you can pay through a subscription through Mercedes Me portal and access internet that way but i would just hotspot off your phone and then you can access youtube as well as your favorite websites that you like to use the license info if you click on that that just gives you a really in-depth information on the license that mercedes uh, use and then click on gallery now this is very useful so if you the car will monitor using the four cameras so it's got something called guard plus and if the car, someone's trying to steal your car, you'll be notified through the Mercedes Me app, I think, and you'll be able to see who's exactly stealing your car and notify the police. So that's very useful. And if you've got a USB stick, if you've got it connected to the car, it will then save any dash cam and the collisions as well. That will save. You have got a hard drive on the, on the car, but I don't know how big the hard drive is. Click on that, that might reveal something. Nah but it will hold at least at least a dozen photos. I have seen that in the past. Comfort, if I click on comfort first, because that's more fun, you've got the ambient lighting. See Connectix as well, before I move on. Now this is useful, if, if you're on a long, long journey, uh, the car seat will adjust during the journey, just so you don't get tired as much. So that's very clever. Instead of a traditional seat where it just stays fixed, the seat here will just keep adjusting slowly, just to keep you as fresh as possible. You have your 64 light ambient look colors, and you can change it to a multicolor if you want, or a monochrome, and the brightness as well, you can change that to high, low, and you can set zones. So if you're getting too much glare on the windscreen from these ambient lights, you can dim these if you want to and then the bottom ones you could keep nice and bright. That's up to you. And then effects as well, I'd keep this on because it just gives a bit more drama when you're coming in and out of the car. And then if the alarm ever goes off, the ambient lights will also go crazy and they'll flash like crazy, which is cool. And then the climate, I change the temperature. You won't see it, but as you increase and decrease the temperature, these ambient lights will change color to red or blue, depending on hot or cold. That's quite cool, I think. Settings, if I click on that, this is the full settings of the car. So here you can switch on and off systems, collision avoidance. Here you can customize things such as how early you want these systems to react. If you find you might want to keep changing these, you could set this as a favorite and then change them while you're driving if you want to i would keep it as late if you don't like these systems being on you will need to have it on uh, mainly because your insurance could be void if you switched it off so i would keep it on for your safety but maybe just change it to late so they don't kick in as much the blind spot assist as well you got a warning triangle in the mirrors to warn you if there's any cars in your blind spot. You've got your traffic sign assist as well, so the car will tell you what the speed limit is of the road, just there. And then your attention assist, that is a really clever system. You're on the motorway for a long, long time. You might not realize that you're actually tired, but the car is actually checking your performance. And then a message will pop up here to say, you need a break. Usually a half an hour break isn't more than enough. And then you can set off on your journey again. And then traffic light view, that's quite cool. Let's see what that does. 
traffic the function assists you at traffic light control junctions by displaying a video image which you give a convenient view of the traffic lights hmm. interesting traffic sign assist what's that do yeah I want that I want further warnings as well that'd be good and then you can set it to different speeds as well I don't know if you're going too fast there's one because this is a demonstrating vehicle camera so if you need to clean the camera click on that and then you'll be able to clean the rear camera and GPS piece activity that's fine you can delete if you don't want the camera to automatically come on in certain locations parking here you can customize how you want the tone of the car park the parking sensors to be the audio fade out as well maneuvering assistant I'd have that on and then vehicle winter time limit that's clever manual shifting leave that off uh, why why have an auto automatic filling station search yeah car wash board comfort easy entry so I actually would keep this on so the steering wheel when I next time go in will raise up so it's just easy to get in and out of the car and then it'll come back down the steering wheel roof sun blind now this is personal preference if you wanted a premium plus car but you didn't want you know the open sunroof it might be just worth keeping the blind on so that's something useful open close you got the vehicle protection that'll be on automatic locking yeah acoustic lock if you switch that on what will happen is every time you lock the car the horn will go it'll go beep and then that's just letting everyone know that your car's locked I don't think your neighbors will appreciate that and then your automatic mirrors I'd have that automatically to close why not dynamic select Here you can customize the dynamic uh, settings or you can find them from here then you got your lights now you can change the lights I would actually keep these on the dynamic so as you turn the vehicle uh, with the steering the lights will also turn with you so that's quite useful I think and projection I would have that on so that just gives a bit more theater when you you know coming in and out of the car you've got a uh, projection lights on the front and then also in the doors as well so you'll see the Mercedes star when you open the door yeah leave these on as well this is useful low beam so if you go to another country and the lights need to be on a certain position you can adjust it here that's very useful interior and exterior Got your locator lighting, interior lighting, exterior lighting delay. You can customize these. And then if you want to change your ambient lights again, you can from here. And then system. If you do not like this, I'm not going to say it because then you will start asking me, do I want to do something? If you don't like it, you can switch it off from here. And let's go in settings. And that's clever. So if your rear passengers are very annoying and trying to get this to do stuff, only the front passengers can change that. So that's pretty cool. That's very clever, that is. Online recognition. Give that a click. That's clever. So it knows your voice. That's very cool. But you will need to be connected to Mercedes Me. Don't know what proactivity is. Yeah, so this is useful. I've done this. In, in the C class, I've left my phone charging wirelessly in here and it said don't forget your phone, so that's very useful. Here is where you change the display of the brightness. So you can change this. You'll notice it more when you're in the night. 
But at the moment, if I decrease it all the way, I don't know if that's big enough. That's maximum, that's low. Can't really tell, but really in the night is when you're gonna notice it. So that's clever. Activate, deactivate, yeah, that's just for the screen. And then if you don't like the zero layer and you just want a traditional uh, menu rather than stuff prompting, automatically prompting, prompting to you know do stuff, then you might prefer the classic but I like zero layer. Graphic goodies, now that is fun. So at Christmas time, the MBUX will change. So that's pretty cool, I think. So on special days, the graphics of the MBUX will change. I love that. If you want to change the units from miles to kilometers, so if I click kilometers, you can see now the speedometer is now in kilometers, even up here, not kilometers. I'll change it back to Mars. Coming back here, you can change the language if you want to. And then your keyboard, if you want to type stuff, you can. And you can change the language as well. And then control elements, what's this? Acoustic feedback. Oh, yeah, that's for the touch screen. So I'd keep that as normal. And how quickly, how sensitive do you want this? Do you want this to be? Slow, medium, or fast. I'll keep it as slow. And then info. So the great thing about this car, you don't need to use the manual, which is down there. You could just use the manual built into the car and you just click on this and then you can just use the manual on the infotainment screen, which is very clever. And this is very in depth and you can search for certain things. So that's my little useful feature there. System information, so this might be useful when the car's being serviced, and then the license information. So I've shown you these, that's a separate video. I've shown you these as well. And then I've also shown off-road in a separate video. There's the residual heat. So the car is switched off, and now I can use the residual heat function as well. So I give that a click. Now the car will keep the car as warm as possible as long as the engine is warm enough. That's very cool. You can hear it working now. I'll switch that off. Uh, I'm trying to get the head up display to work and you might be able to see it right now. Because we're on a car park, it's not showing the road, it's saying road not mapped, which is fine. And on the infotainment screen, I have some arrows telling me which way to go. Now let's show you what this looks like. You'll notice as well the head-up display. If I go forward, it tells you when the car's in hold, which is quite cool. It tells you how close you're getting to the car in front, which is very useful. We've got here as well, but it's nice to have it on the head-up display as well. And then if I hold the car, yeah, I've got the hold function, as well as on the instrument cluster, I have got it here as well. That's very useful. Now, I'm going to drive. You'll be able to see what this looks like. It does update here for me. It's telling me I need to do that. The head up display is also telling me what I need to do. Sat nav now. Now you can see the arrows working. And I also have some visual display here. You can see that's very useful. Got information telling me I need to take a right there. Also on the instrument cluster and then the head up display as well. I should have shown how to use the actual sat nav as well. How to, so if I put any previous destination, put that one in. I'll press center. Then I'll select let's go. That has now set the sat nav up. What I can do, you know, if I'm finished with the sat nav, press this button here, and that will end the sat, sat nav. And then I've got more information here as well, which is quite useful. This then provides me more information. I can change settings if I need to, to avoid anything. And then also, I go back here, 
can change what I want to see in the view. Message and tones. That just changes if you want the sat nav not to speak and stuff like that. That's, a, that's an option. You can add to other points of interest if you need to. And that, I've just ended the sat nav there. Or I could have ended it here if there was a destination set. The quickest way to set a sat nav is use the where to function and just type in the postcode. That's what I would recommend. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe as it helps me and the channel grow. Please like this video. Also comment if you have any suggestions or questions. Before I forget, there is a new thanks feature. If you want to donate to the channel, then please feel free to use this feature and any money raised from YouTube will be used to buy more equipment. Check out the GLC playlist for more videos related to the GLC. Even though the cars in the GLC playlist are of the C-Class, the features will be the same. So hopefully it helps you out too. I cannot believe we've had over a million views on YouTube. It's only been a year where I've been making long form videos and the growth of the channel has been amazing. Let me know if you would have preferred a shorter video because I might be giving too much information. Thanks for watching.